Hey friends, we've got a great episode today. We are talking about the most neglected system, I believe, in healthcare. The one system that I believe is responsible for many chronic sickness, a lot of people being ill, and just really not reaching their potential. And yet, I would say it's something that is not only neglected in healthcare, but it's just not emphasized in normal physiology, normal uh, conversation about health. And so I'm excited to bring a uh, friend and also co-worker onto the show, uh, Dr. Drew Alcorn. Welcome to the show. Hey, good morning, Nick. How are you? Doing great. Doing great. You ready to have this conversation about nervous system? I'm excited. I am too. This is right in our wheelhouse, huh? I'd say. Yeah. Yeah. So we're going to talk about nervous system and not just like why it's important, but also some of the things that influence the nervous system, mm-hmm. cause it to be imbalanced, cause people to be sick, and yeah. what we see on a regular basis. So this this was the week of our masterclass series that I've been waiting for, and not only because I get to talk about it, but because this is obviously the most important part of mm-hmm. developing a strong immune response, of developing resiliency when it comes to you know fending off viruses or getting sick is a well-functioning nervous system. Yep, 100%. And the the fun, the fun thing about the nervous system and the fun thing about talking about the nervous system is it's just a topic that's like untouched, right? This is like a territory where a lot of people just don't navigate to. We know how important the nervous system is, or at least intuitively. We know the brain controls everything. Right. We know that literally our heart is beating, our lungs are breathing, that things are happening inside of us because we're alive and well. Mm -hmm. And we know that our brain is controlling that. Intuitively, we know that. Right. But how many times do we have a conversation with a patient and we're just talking about the nervous system and they're like, you know what? I feel like I've never learned this before. Why is it overlooked? Right. What it it, it gets overlooked. It gets glossed over. Mm -hmm. Um, it's, it's maybe the most in your face thing or at least should be but then like you just said it's the thing that gets the least attention the least focus and the thing that i always hear from patients when i just go through a very very cursory description of what the nervous system does and is for and they look at me sort of puzzled and Mm -hmm. ask why has no one ever explained it to me like that before yeah you do that constantly about that you know someone will say like i i remember learning about this in grade school but honestly, I've never even thought about this since then. Mm-hmm. So I think the conversation is going to be good because we're going to talk about what influences the nervous system, you know, all the different things that would cause it to be imbalanced. And you and I might argue that um, imbalance within the nervous system is one of the, if not the cause, underlying cause of dysfunction, disease, uh, and underlying cause ultimately take years off of someone's life and early death. Right. And so if we know that and we understand that, then I believe this is probably the most important message that we could talk about. Yeah. I mean, h- how how much opportunity then do you have to really play a role in the development of health mm-hmm. over your life when you know and understand how critical this system is mm-hmm. to your health? Here's where people, here's where we, we miss people on this one, is they'll say, nervous system? How does that have anything to do with my health condition? How does that have anything to do with... Because if you talk about nutrition, that's a hot topic because we all mm-hmm. eat like multiple times a day, right? right. Uh, you talk about bowel health. Mm-hmm. That's a, you know, people tune into that because, mm-hmm. you know, they should have bowel movements mm-hmm. and uh, digestive health on a daily basis. And when it comes to the nervous system, it's like, yeah. I don't know. I yeah. mean, what, how does that influence my life? Well, I, I think a part of the problem is it's it almost kind of seems like this up in the clouds concept, mm-hmm. right? Like you just said, nu- nutrition, it, it's obvious. It makes sense. We get that. Bowel health, we get that. Mm-hmm. With the nervous system, you think of the nervous system and maybe you think of like a neurosurgeon mm-hmm. and you think, oh man, wow, that's just something I could never understand. Mm-hmm. Or you think of like a rocket scientist that's, that's something I would never, ever understand. And then, I don't know, maybe people just sort of write it off. Like, I'm never really going to get this, and it doesn't apply to me. And so I'm just, I don't know, skip over it. You know, it's interesting. So in training, when I was down in Naples, part of our training was we had to go to the local, like, big box stores and put up a booth and talk to people mm. about the nervous system. Okay. And so we would, um, you know, we were in Walmart, 
down in Naples, Florida. <laughs> like not the nice part of Naples. You know how Naples is like known to be really rich, right? This oh, yeah. was not that part. Okay. <laughs> right. So this is like the worst area in, uh, and, and then you're in like the worst of like, there's five Walmarts. This was the worst one out of all of them. And here we are, we have this little booth and we'd ask, have you been checked? And people would say checked for what? Checked for interference in the nervous system. And you know what the number one response that we would get? No, I'm not nervous. Oh, wow. I'm not nervous. And they'd shake their hands like, <laughs> I'm not nervous. And they'd kind of like laugh around, laugh, laugh it off. And it's like, that is like a common response. Yeah. And that's what most people, when they think about the nervous system, mm. I don't have anxiety. Yeah. It's not about just anxiety. Right. It's not about just being nervous. And that's where I think most people think about when they think about the nervous system. Yeah. But what I love about this conversation with with you is 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 we're going to get into more of depth within the nervous system, and even um, e- even phrases like biopsychology, mm-hmm. which I don't believe a lot of people know that. Yeah. Um, even that term biopsychology. So let's just jump right into this. When it comes to the nervous system and you know the the need of the nervous system, we understand how important this is. But let's go into a little bit of depth here. What is uh, what is biopsychology? So simply explained, biopsychology is really how your brain and your biology interact. It's the way that you think about things, the way that your body responds to those things. And again, because I think we want to really try to keep this information as accessible as we possibly can. Because this can be a confusing topic, I mean, let's let's try to keep it simple. Mm-hmm. The way that your body and your brain work together. I mean, if you look at the word biopsychology, it's just they've just kind of been pushed together. Mm-hmm. What I what I think is uh, important part of this conversation is it's not just the brain sending messages to organs; it's also the organs sending message back to the mm-hmm. brain. Yeah, it's a two way street. It's a two-way street. And sometimes mm-hmm. we talk about like the safety pin cycle, mm-hmm. right, of that. And what that means is that, you know, brain sends signal down to the organ, organ sends signal back to the brain. And we talk about when there's a closed loop system, when that's functioning at its absolute best, when there's good communication to and from back to back, mm-hmm. that that's a balanced nervous system. That's a properly functioning nervous system. What happens, though, is that many times over the course of time uh whether it's in maybe it's a a traumatic event maybe it's an emotional physical maybe it's even chemical and we're going to talk through those three things today and during this conversation but it's an interruption on some level of the communication and then what that does is that influences everything including psychology Mm -hmm. including emotional health because of the imbalance or influence there yeah and i mean we're gonna we're gonna get into a, a little bit later on in here but um the 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 connection between Um, gut health and brain health Mm -hmm. is well documented at this point Mm -hmm. and um, diseases like Alzheimer's and dementia are being called and termed and coined type Mm three diabetes Mm -hmm. because it's well understood how large of an impact the health of the gut specifically Mm -hmm. has on the health of our brain and the health of overall functioning our enteric nervous system so the enteric nervous system is um sort of like what people call your your gut instincts Mm -hmm. right like the 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 normal phrase like gut instincts like oh i just followed my gut or i was just following Mm -hmm. my instincts it's nerves that are built in to our actual gut that are designed to guide us and keep us safe and this is something that has developed in our body over a long period of time for the purpose mainly of protection. And that's one of the things that I love so much about the human body is this element of self-protection and self-preservation that's automatically built into every single response of every interaction of our daily life. The phrase, the body needs no help, just no interference. Mm. And that the body's always doing the right thing at the right time. Let me challenge that just a little bit and just ask the question, I mean, is it, is that true? Because what about all these other conditions? What about all these, what about cancer? What about, you know, autoimmunity? What about, what about all these things? Is the body really doing the right thing at the right time, every time? The way I see it is you can really only look at it one way or the other, that you either believe and subscribe to the idea that it is 
or you believe and you subscribe to the idea that it's not. And one of those is associated with hope. And one of those is associated with fear and disconnection. And I choose to subscribe to the idea that the body is always doing the right thing on our behalf every single time without exception. If we unintentionally, let's just get extreme and say unintentionally, we, we, we drink a, a cup full of gasoline. I don't know. We thought it was apple juice and somebody put a cup of gasoline and we drank it and it went into our stomach. What would happen? We would get sick. Mm -hmm. And then what would happen? We would vomit. Is the vomiting bad? Of course not. Right. The vomiting is keeping us alive. Right. It's a, it's almost if you ate, ate a pound of E. coli, E. coli, right? So you mm -hmm. eat a pound of it. Mm -hmm. If you didn't get sick from that, we're talking trouble. That's yeah, that's a problem. That, that would, that would be a bad thing. Right. I think where a lot of people struggle with this is that they haven't wrestled with these topics mm -hmm. enough. Yeah. You know, and it's not because we're in the health field. I don't like to call it medical field. You catch that. I don't like to call it medical field because right. I agree. It's we're, we're in the, the business of helping people to be their, their healthiest mm -hmm. without the use of drugs and surgery. That's the, that's the idea there. Yeah. So it, when somebody says, are you, you know, you guys aren't, you know, medical doctors though. Well, yeah, exactly right. right. We, right. Yes. Our tool yeah, by choice. Our, yeah. Our tools are, we chose this field mm -hmm. because we didn't want to use drugs in, in surgery and mm -hmm. those types of therapeutics yeah. in order to influence the body. It just didn't, you know, I can speak for myself. Just that, that doesn't resonate with my philosophy of life. Yeah. I, I don't run to the medicine cabinet. I did. I haven't run to the medicine cabinet when I felt sick. You know, that was just like within me, even from an early age. Mm -hmm. And when I was told that my health condition required it, it really didn't resonate with my, with my belief or my philosophy. Mm -hmm. Um, even though I did that for a period of time to try to get myself well, cause I didn't feel good. That still never resonated with my, with my physiology. It didn't res resonate with who I was, my philosophy on health. And, and it's a, it's a, it's a conscious decision, but I feel like a lot of people don't wrestle with this topic and beat it up enough mm -hmm. of, is the body really, is it innately, is it, is it black and white? Is it black and white where the body is innately attempting to do the right thing at the right time is, uh, the body. And some people will say nature needs no help, just no interference or God needs no help. Just no interference. Mm -hmm. I don't feel like people wrestle around with that enough. Yeah. Yeah. It's a, you know, it's a little bit of a philosophical concept, you know, to think in that sort of esoteric way of, man, how, how does this all work? Mm -hmm. And um, I think it's a tough one for people. And I, I feel privileged that I choose to do it. And mm -hmm. I like getting to teach this to people, you know, the description of the definition of the word doctor. Mm hmm is teacher mm -hmm. whereas the definition of the word physician is healer mm -hmm. and we all know who the great physician is mm -hmm. and i love being a doctor of chiropractic because i get to teach principles of health and healing and then watch that create transformation in people's lives as they cling on to these concepts and then they start to invoke these types of responses in their life because they want health for themselves. They want health for them, for their families. And more and more, increasingly what I'm seeing and the people that I'm talking to, they want it in a natural way. Mm -hmm. They want it in a way that's not associated with, I'm just going to go straight to the medicine cabinet or I'm just going to you know, go straight to my medical doctor. And the, there's always a time and a place for that. But increasingly, people are wanting to take their health into their own hands. And I just love getting to be a part of that.